it's that time again where we have to debunk the age-old argument that heavy metal music, action movies, general godlessness, Dungeons and Dragons, huh? video games are to blame for the systematic and rapidly increasing volume of horrific violence in the United States of America. Let's begin. In science, which is something that I hope at least the majority of us believe in, you form a hypothesis to explain an event and then test it against the available evidence to see if your logic is sound. And if it's not, the hypothesis fails and you discard it and form another one to attempt to explain what's happening. The hypothesis being put forward by several politicians, including President Trump, is that video games, in concert with mental health issues, are key contributing factors to the recent rise in mass shooting incidents in the United States, specifically with regard to the shootings in Gilroy, California, California, Dayton, Ohio, and El Paso, Texas, that collectively claimed 34 lives and left 66 more wounded in the span of less than a week. But even a cursory glance at the rest of the world disproves this hypothesis so quickly and obviously that it's hard to believe that it was even suggested with sincerity. Now, even if you're skeptical of the established science that says that the world is round, that there's absolutely no clear connection between games and violence, the United States does not exist in a vacuum. This means that we can look at similar countries with similar cultures and gaming habits to see if this hypothesis bears out. If games were, in fact, the root cause of America's epidemic of mass shooting, Shootings, then logically, they would have the same effect on any country where those same games are played, which is nearly everywhere. Spoilers, they don't. And America's frequency of mass shootings is unique in the world. This effectively rules out games as the cause. Don't believe me? Countries like Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand are all immediately comparable to the US in that they all share a common language and to some degree all share a large amount of the same popular culture. All of them have a large gaming market, and here at IGN we see significant readership from those countries. And yet, while none of them is completely free from horrific gun massacres, New Zealand being the most recent victim of a racially motivated attack, the rates of mass shootings per capita in all of those countries is dramatically lower than that of the United States. Statistically, it's difficult to pin down the exact number of incidents of mass shootings in the US compared to other countries. For one thing, the NRA successfully lobbied Congress to pass a law in 1996 preventing the Center for Disease Control from studying the effects of gun violence. But others have taken up the cause. The Gun Violence Archive is a nonprofit effort to track incidents within the U.S. and classifies a mass shooting as an event in which four or more people are killed or wounded, which is a more valuable metric than the number of fatalities which many sources use. This was the source of the number from that viral tweet that contrasted the number of 2019 shootings in the U.S. with 24 other countries, most of which it lists as zero. Our research did find more non-fatal shootings than this tweet reflects, including two recent incidents in Toronto, Canada. But even adjusting for that, it's a drop in the bucket next to the US's staggering total. Though it's difficult to verify that with comparable stats for countries such as Switzerland or Italy, the mere fact that few detailed statistics have been compiled indicates a much lower rate than the US. Beyond English-speaking countries, we can look at others in Europe and Asia, none of which show the same pattern of mass shootings, most notably Japan, which is widely known as one of, if not the singular, most gaming-friendly cultures in the world, and has effectively zero mass shootings in a country of 128 million people. Even factoring in Japan's mass stabbing incidents, there's been one this year in which two were killed, the per capita rate of these attacks is nowhere near that of the United States. Mental health is another off-sided element in the plague of shootings and is a severe and worsening problem, but again, America is not alone in this area in the slightest. Without evidence to suggest that Americans suffer disorders that might lead to violent acts at a significantly higher rate than their counterparts in other nations, there's no basis at all to suggest that the combination of mental health and video games is the cause of mass shootings. For these reasons and others, this hypothesis simply doesn't stand up to scrutiny, and is clearly an attempt at scapegoating video games for the problem when there are far more obvious culprits, specifically absurdly lax gun laws that make access to extremely deadly weapons complete with high capacity magazines and other dubiously legal accessories and modifications depending on where in the US you live, even for those with a history of red flag raising often publicly displayed disturbing behavior. This, combined with an increase in overtly racist and divisive rhetoric coming from influential figures ranging from self-styled online influencers to the President of the United States himself, makes it plain to see where some of these deranged criminals are drawing their inspiration from. 
Those are the problems that need the focus of our lawmakers in the wake of tragedies like this. Trotting out the same tired argument is a cowardly attempt to avoid taking meaningful action on the real issues that might actually have an effect on the rate of mass shootings in the United States. And the fact that we're even wasting our effort here talking about this now is probably the point. Distract and deflect. I'm sorry we had to go through this again, and I'm even more sorry that this probably won't be the last time.